Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Monk. I'm head of communications and media for the World Economic Forum. Very warm welcome to this opening co-chairs press conference for the fifth World Economic Forum Latin American Summit. Very pleased and proud to be joined here by Senor Luis Fernando Alajon uh, from Grupo Empresarial in Colombia, by Luis Fernando Furlan uh, from Brazil Foods. Uh, we're uh, waiting on the arrival of Senor Londoño Saldariaga uh, from Banca Colombia. Uh, also with us, Graham Mackay, Chief Executive SAB Miller, and James Turley, the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Ernst & Young. All of our co-chairs will be making an introductory statement on their impressions and hopes for this uh, summit here in the magnificent city of Cartagena. Uh, and then we'll be taking some questions. Uh, co-chairs will be speaking in Spanish or in English as uh, they choose. So please, when it comes to questions, identify yourself by name and by news organization so we can get track of where you're from. Uh, if you'll just allow me then to introduce Senor Alacon, and uh, we'll go through opening statements from our co-chairs. Thank you very much. Senor Alacon. Thank you very much, Ms. Monk. I am representing the locals, and I would be begin this brief introduction. I think that for us in Colombia, it is a great satisfaction to have this gathering of the World Economic Forum in Cartagena. There are big expectations for many reasons because the World Economic Agenda requires discussion and we will have important leaders here that will make significant contributions to that discussion. It is also, this meeting is also very important for us in Colombia because it is an excellent opportunity to have representatives, significant representatives from enterprises, from governments, to have them have a better view of the country, to become familiar with the country, to visit Cartagena. I think that this will open up major opportunities of having an appropriate image for Colombia and to give us business opportunities for those of us who are who wish to have business opportunity I have to just wish to tell you that the expectations are great and that we know that the outcomes will be very important for all of us A highly symbolic event um, of great interest to us, but also great interest to the economic uh, world and the region that uh, Colombia is hosting this uh, event in this uh, magnificent city of Cartagena, and uh, it's visible proof of the of the progress that has been made uh, in Colombia on many fronts over the last uh, decade or so. Uh, as I think most people know, I represent uh, one of the biggest brewers in the world. We have interests all over the world in, in 75 countries on six continents. And we are very large investors in Colombia specifically and in the Andean region and Central America more generally. Uh, it's a major part of our global operations. Um, uh, large and healthy and growing and so I have a vested interest uh, in these deliberations. Uh, I regard this kind of occasion as an opportunity for a genuine dialogue. I'm hoping to learn a lot from other participants, from other from commentators and uh, there's nothing like a site visit as it were to learn about uh, the countries. Um, so I'm hoping to pick up a lot of information as well as perhaps play some small part in shaping a consensus. The, uh, the growth of this region uh, has been for us gratifying, um, both in a general sense since the start of our investment here, but more specifically the recovery of these economies, the weathering of the, uh, the global crisis has been better than expected and in fact this part of the world uh, in our global lineup has been the one that has recovered best and most strongly. Um, 
So we're, of course, extremely pleased with that and are hoping that it will continue. There is a great deal of further growth potential in our particular uh, line of products uh, in, this, in this region. So we are interested in anything that can be done uh, to realize that potential smoothly and continuously. Uh, the performance so far has been good. There's obviously a great deal of, of uh, potential for further business uh, development, liberalization, uh, progress, and uh, we would like to see that happening. Graham, thank you very much. Can I call on uh, Senor Furlan? Yes, good morning. The when is the American countries are proving to be resilient democracies and uh, recovering from this crisis with sustainable growth. Uh, there are several programs for poverty reaction, uh, reduction and social and economic improvements. Uh, foreign trade also is moving uh, fast. Regional integration is a fact. The so-called multilatinas from different countries are investing in the region and outside the region. And there are a lot of uh, well-succeeded programs that could be replicated in different countries of, of the region. Uh, in the area of renewable energy, Colombia, Brazil, and other countries are moving ahead and giving uh, an example to the world uh, in order to reduce the global warming. And but there are also a few challenges that remain. Uh, one of them is education. The other one is the infrastructure. There are efforts to commute the Atlantic coast to the Pacific coast with railroads and roads, and that will uh, give a more sense of integration for the countries of uh, South America. I hope the discussions in Cartagena will help, help to provide a lot of ideas and more integration and growth and prosperity for the region. Thank you. Thank you. James. Well, like all the other co-chairs, it's a great honor to, uh, to be here. Uh, I spend a lot of time engaged with the region. I will say this is my first trip to this beautiful city of Cartagena. Um, been in Bogota before and, and obviously many of the other great economies in Latin, Latin America. Um, I think that, like others have said, it's a great opportunity to actually engage in what will be a very both provocative and I think successful dialogue around this region of the world and this region's place in the world. Uh, like Graham said, I think it's an opportunity to learn, it's an opportunity to share. Um, as we look at our business, we're in 140 countries all around the world. And we're seeing exactly what has been said by the others as far as the growth here and the future growth potential here. And so it's a place of, of immense focus for Ernst & Young and immense investment. As, as I look at this region's place in the world, uh, I would expect that a part of what will come out of this dialogue will be the importance of real, real global coordination uh, in terms of, of policy responses and choices as we move forward in the world. One of the things that does worry me a little bit is as coordinated as the world became during the crisis, there's at least a risk that in the recovery phase, you could have countries or regions trying to go it alone. I think a real level of global cooperation is going to be needed to move forward. I think secondly, there is real power in this region doing more and more to support entrepreneurship and to support the entrepreneurs who are building jobs, lifting lives, building economies and communities uh, all across the region. And so uh, I expect all of these topics will be uh, deeply discussed over the next couple of days. James, thank you very much indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got some time for questions from the floor. Can I ask you um, to direct your questions to the summit. We won't be taking questions on individual businesses or individual business issues for co-chairs. We'll be talking about the summit and the themes of the summit. That's the intention of this press conference. So can you please direct your questioning to that area? And uh, when you do have a question, can you uh, identify both yourself and the organization with which you're working? So uh, can I just see from a show of hands who would uh, like to raise a question this morning? What a very shy crowd we have. It must be very... Morning. No question. We've been 
in Spanish or even Portuguese. They could be in <laughs> Spanish or Portuguese. We have Spanish and Portuguese speakers uh, with us. Gentleman there. Good, good morning, Ken Parks with Dow Jones Newswires. A, a, a question for the, the panel in general. I, I noticed on the list of, of people who are invited to attend. Oh, stand up. Okay. I, I've noticed that among the people who are invited to attend are several presidents, but I also notice there's an absence of, say, the presidents from Argentina, Brazil, or, or Mexico, which are the economic and political powerhouses in the region. I mean, does their absence in any way detract from, from the, the forum or the summit? Thank you. Well, I should point out, I think it's the most uh, attended uh, summit we've yet held uh, in the five uh, summits that we've done in Latin America. This is uh, <coughs> something like 600 participants. So uh, from the forum's point of view, in terms of a rising level of success, uh, it really is uh, our best uh, summit to date in this region. Um, but I don't know if uh, Mr. Yeah. Senior Furlan, would you like to? Yeah, I spoke directly with President Lula about a month ago, and he was wondering the possibility to come to Cartagena. But as you may know, <clears throat> there was a huge change of the ministerial team in Brazil right this week, where uh, about a number of 10 ministers, they had to resign in order to be candidates for governor, for mayors, for the Congress. And so he has a new team of ministers uh, that he, need, he needs to coach uh, during this week. Besides of that, there is a, a big problem of, uh, with rain in Rio. So Lula was wondering to, to be here, but uh, he said that he expects to be invited next year, even though he will, he will not be the president of Brazil. So it's not a question of uh, Cartagena or Colombia, but it's uh, a local situation of Brazil. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll, oh, go ahead. Well, to your question, do, will it detract from, from the proceedings? I don't think at all. I actually think we've got not just the biggest attendance uh, in the, the West and Latin America, but I think we have a really positive attendance. There's a lot of senior government officials here. There's a lot of NGOs. There's a lot of the corporate community from across the region and across the world, uh, the <laughs> academic community and others. And so I think it pr will prove to be a very productive, very uh, – you know, spirited discussion and debate as, as would hope. And so, so I think it'll be a very positive event. Just a comment. In any event. Reunión. Si mal no estoy. What is important. I'm sorry. Los representantes de las compañías. Uh, representatives of the companies. Que se crea alrededor. This is what is cre being created around the World Economic Forum with broad representations so that the conclusions and the representations are very constructive. Organization. So for us, the bringing together of all the key stakeholders is what's important uh, for this meeting. So that's our definition of success, is having a broad and dynamic representation. Uh, can I look out and see if there's any more uh, comments? Questions? Gentleman in the uh, blue shirt. And can you say where you're from as well? Eh, buenos días, Javier Mozo de la agencia Reuters. Quisiera tener un comentario de cada uno de ustedes acerca de las perspectivas de la economía de América Latina. Latin, the Latin American economy for this year, if it's possible, for this decade as well. Este año y en el, y en el corto plazo, yo diría que una franca in this year, and for the short term, I would say that a frank recovery with regard to the negative results of the preceding year. 
Looking at the decade as a whole, I think that things are much more complicated because there is an entire potential. There are major possibilities for growth of excellent results of improvement in the living conditions of the populations of countries of the region in the next few years. Unfortunately, all of this is conditioned by the fact that the appropriate policies are implemented. I think a great deal remains to be done, particularly with regard to microeconomic aspects and sectoral reform in our countries in order to be able to move ahead in aspects such as improving the quality of education, improving the quality of infrastructure, to improve the quality of our financial systems. We still require reform for this, uh, possibly in some of the countries. This these reforms will require much more work. But I would like to emphasize, and I think it is a general achievement of the region vis-a-vis -vis what we had in the past decades, is an improvement in the quality of our macroeconomic policy. This is very important. We have a region that has already overcome the inflation, very severe inflation problems that we had a couple of decades ago. And now there is much more awareness of the importance of sound macroeconomic policies, but we have to work in sectoral policies. Brazil has a very optimistic vision for 2010 of its economic growth. We believe, and there is a consensus, that it will be almost 6 percent, more than 5 for sure. And this is driven very much by our domestic market, which is very strong. There is a great deal of investment in new industrial facilities, the, staff, the creation of jobs, new employment for 2010. This is something that is about to achieve one and a half million new jobs. In January and February, these were, we had historical records of the historic series for creation of jobs. The industry shows a growth of 10% in production. And the automotive sector in March had it reached, reached the historical record of 330,000 vehicles in one month. With regard to exports, these are not doing so well because of the international prices. But they continue to grow, and imports in March also showed a historical record of more than $15 billion in imports in one month. So there is a great deal of optimism, and also for the next uh, decade as well. Y algo que yo agregaría al respecto es que si miramos hacia el próximo diseño, no hay duda and the East is going to be expanding dramatically. Uh, one of the panels that, uh, that I'll be moderating here at, at the forum will be specifically focused on that. Uh, I believe that China has now become the largest trading partner of Brazil, uh, supplanting the United States. And so I think this is going to be a major change moving not just China, but the broad East into a very major trading partner with the region in a way that's going to be positive for, uh, for all the countries around here. Thank you. Uh, just a further question. We, uh, we're live streaming this press conference uh, online. Uh, we have a question coming from Twitter asking how this meeting will help support uh, job creation in both Colombia and across Latin America. Does anyone care to talk about the possibilities for creating jobs across the region? And <laughs> I don't think that this is the purpose of the meeting, but there is no doubt that to the extent that a meeting such as this will have positive impact on the quality of decisions by governments, by businesses, to the extent that new opportunities for business are created, of course, they will have a marginal impact with regard to the creation of jobs. But I would understand that this is not precisely the purpose of this gathering. 
agree exactly with that uh, proposition. The, the economic growth you've all spoken about is precisely the engine that's going to drive a wave of, of job creation. Senor Fulan? What is occurring in Brazil is that at present we have the highest rates of employment, but we need engineers, specialists in information technologies. There are about 100,000 positions that are open to be filled because there is an asymmetry. There are people who are looking for jobs but are not skilled in these areas. So this could be a very significant challenge to be discussed here in Cartagena, which is that of having more training provided to people, particularly young people, who are entering the labor market because at present, a young person who begins to work without knowing anything about computers and all of those will be underemployed. So this could be a very important issue. On this, it, it ties to my opening statements around the importance of entrepreneurship. One of the things that I think will come out of this forum will be a discussion of the policy choices that are best supportive of the entrepreneur because the entrepreneurs are the ones that will in all likelihood build the job growth. And these will include, you know, maintaining open economies and avoiding protectionism. You know, making sure that both uh, the, the legal systems and tax systems and, and cultures, frankly, don't o over penalize failure because many entrepreneurs fail the first time out. They don't all succeed. It's going to talk about tax systems. It's going to talk about financing systems, making sure that finance is available for job growth and then I think the last thing that, that may come on the screen is how streamlining regulation uh, is really important to the encouraging of an entrepreneur to go take risks and, and build a plant, build a business. If there's too many permits that are needed, the entrepreneurs don't have the staff to work through that system. It's really important that the streamlining occur. Thank you. And I think, uh, I think also for anyone watching this online around the world with the kind of qualifications that Senor Fulan's talking about, the idea of going south to make a career for themselves will undoubtedly have uh, attractions in the years ahead. I'm very pleased to welcome, uh, as we draw to a close, unfortunately, uh, Jorge Londino Salariaga, with my apologies for my, uh, my Spanish pronunciation, uh, from Bank of Colombia. Um, sir, you haven't had a chance to really give us your uh, impressions of, uh, of this uh, summit. Uh, would you help us by giving, if you like, a, a closing uh, impression of what you're hoping for in the next couple of days? Well, thank you. I, I am very pleased to be able to attend to this forum, and I am very pleased to see the big attendance that uh, this forum has managed to, to achieve. Uh, I'm just coming from one of the first panels, one which is particularly important for me being a banker, which is a panel in the new regulation, in the analysis of the new regulation for the financial system and uh, the discussion around the, the new proposals. And certainly that panel was a good show of that, uh, what this uh, uh, meeting means in the sense that uh, we were able to hear a group of highly qualified individuals and very knowledgeable persons about the uh, about this topic and uh, the conversation and the interaction among the panelists was of the great importance i certainly learned a lot so this uh, world economic forum of latin america is an unparalleled opportunity to uh, make a network and to uh, participate in uh, high level discussions of the most relevant topics for the region. Sir, thank you very much indeed. And uh, with that, I'm afraid all of our co-chairs are going to have to uh, take on the onerous task of participating and leading some of those discussions right now. So they've got sessions to go to. I hope you'll all enjoy the next couple of days. Thank you for coming and uh, look forward to your participation in the summit. Thank you. Thank you. Bueno.